What's up guys, welcome back. We're gonna do a quick video here on mounting SIFS shares on Ubuntu or Linux in general. This should work on any Linux distro as long as it's a fairly new one, I suppose. All right, so first thing you need to do though is you do need to get SIF utils and that's an apt install SIFS utils. So make sure that's installed because you're gonna need that, uh, the component for mount to use SIFS. And then um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount a a Samba share that's running on another Linux box, but in reality this could be any Samba share or SIF share that's um, out on your network. So at home for me that's just like I said a Linux host that's sharing out. I could I could also mount a Windows share. Uh, at the office I do the same thing on my Linux box and I mount a file head on a storage device which is an EMC and um, that's just serving with SIFs or Samba. I'm sure I don't believe they're interchangeable there but it seems like they sometimes can be. I, I don't know, that's a different technical question I have to go over. So, but what we're gonna do is, uh, there's a couple ways you can do these mounts. One, you can put them in a shell script if you wanted to, a bash script and just have it do a mount statement. Um, I don't really like that personally, because one, you have to run it as root, so every time you boot your system, you gotta go in and, and execute this as root. Um, two, it, it's, unless you put the password in the, in the mount statement, it's gonna ask for your username and it's going to ask it for when you do the sudo for it, right? So you're going to enter passwords a couple times, just kind of a pain in the butt. I really just wanted the amount to show up when I reboot my system. If I change my password on the network, that's fine. I'll just quickly update the uh, credentials file. So what we're going to do in this scenario is we're going to do it with um, putting it in the FS tab entry. And um, it's actually pretty easy to do. I've got it already in there because I use it today. So we're just going to go ahead and do a cat, etc. FS tab. And you can see that I've got my, my um, network mounts right here. So the first um, option here is the server IP, and you could likely use a host name as well if you wanted to. Just make sure you have DNS working correctly, and it has to be a fully qualified domain name. Uh, unlike Windows, where you can do short names, <coughs> or I guess also known as a NetBIOS name, whatever. Um, so then it's so it's the server IP or host name slash the share name, and then where do you want to mount that to? So in Windows, you, just, you don't really do this, right? You don't need to mount it anywhere per se. That just happens on the back end somewhere. Um, for, for accessing network shares on Linux, I have to mount it to another directory. So I've created the, a share folder and an Aaron folder underneath the media. The reason I chose media is because in Ubuntu, if you mount anything under media, it automatically shows up on your desktop. So I don't have to worry about shortcuts on the desktop if I mount these to the media share or media directory. Um, and then this is the SIFS module for mount. And then these are the options specific to SIFs. So I've got my credentials file, which is G, G server creds. I got the character set and then file mode and dir mode. File mode and dir mode, these are 777777 on both of them. And that's gonna give me read, write, execute for user group and uh, everyone for all files that get mounted. I don't, you know, in some unique instances, you may not wanna do that. In my case, I have full admin to my files. I don't, I don't want any unique permissions, I just want them wide open for when it's mounted. I'm the only one that uses this computer, so I don't have to worry about um, any other permissions issues of people coming in and accessing my share because it was mounted by root and they're messing around with stuff. But um, So there's another option you can do and that's you can mount it as a different user, a different local user, and you could do a UID equals um, you know whatever you wanted so that it doesn't mount it necessarily as root, it would mount it as user username and then the group. But we're just gonna leave it like this, this is fine. So those are the FS tab statements. The zero zero at the end, I, honestly, I don't know what that means, I'd have to look it up. It says dump and pass, whatever that means. But for this, for the SIF mounts, it's always zero zero. Um, so the, the credentials file is the one that you wanna pay attention to next, right? Because we're not putting username and password in here, but we need this to all happen behind when you're booting the system without any um, prompting. So if you look at I'm already in my home folder, so if I look at my, I'm not going to show you that creds because I don't, I don't really want my password out there. Even though it's not really that awesome of a password because it's local network, I still would rather not. So I made a, a, an example that literally looks the same, and inside that creds file is literally two lines, right? Username equals and the username, and then password equals and the password. So um, this is pretty simple. Literally just that format, two lines. Put your username and password in there. And then what you want to do is you can um, set the permissions of that file if you want. Oops, let me 
and you set it to 600 so that it's read and write for the um, user only. So there is a benefit to that, right, in the sense that if somebody did find the file and they were on your system, they wouldn't necessarily be able to view it. And obviously, if they're root to the box, you've got bigger problems anyways, because it doesn't matter. They have to be able to see this anyways. So um, what I'm going to do next is um, you could either reboot the system and it would just mount these, or you can run uh, mount-a, which is mount all. So it's going to go through that FS tab file, and it's going to try to mount every line that's listed in there. If it's already mounted, it's not a big deal. It doesn't mount it again. So there you go, boom. So I just did a sudo mount dash A and you can see that both of these popped up on my desktop, right? Because again, I mounted them to the media folder or directory rather, and that automatically makes them show up on the Ubuntu desktop. So if I go and I, and I uh, change directory to one of these folders that I mounted, you can see these are actually the files that are on the server, right? And so it, they look like they're local obviously, but they're mounted from a net uh, share. You can also browse them, of course, through uh, the files program in Ubuntu and that's basically it. So this is literally how I mount uh, network shares on my Ubuntu box. It works really well. I can get to all my documents this way on both Linux and Windows. It's the same share. So um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed this and hope it, hope it was uh, useful for you guys. Thanks.